Today's guest is Akron University's, sorry, University of Akron's head coach, Caleb Porter. You might have heard of him. His team won the national championship this season. Well, I'm so excited to interview Caleb, but I'm also very excited that this week we announced the OSA World Juggathon to benefit nothing but nets. Okay, it's going to be awesome. On April 25th, 2011, World Malaria Day, soccer players, fans, and coaches from all over will juggle to get better, juggle to save lives at 6 p.m. their standard time. All proceeds raised will be donated to the Nothing But Nets campaign, so for every $10 raised, that will provide a bed net to a person in need in Africa to help prevent malaria. If you hate mosquitoes and malaria as much as I do and love soccer, then find out how you can help and download a pledge sheet today at, on the OSA World Juggathon page at OnlineSoccerAcademy.com and help fight malaria by juggling. In just five years as Akron's head coach, Caleb Porter, he is the NCAA's most winningest active coach. He's got a .841 winning percentage. His Akron Zips reached the national championship the past two years, and this recent year they won it. In 2009, he was voted the National Coach of the Year, and in his time at Akron, he's developed 13 players that have been, have been drafted in MLS. Okay? Not only does Akron win, they win in style okay? by playing attractive soccer. Caleb recently just upped his deal with the Zips until 2020. Before Akron goes off and become an MLS team, let's get him on the line and see what he has to say. Just congrats on winning the National Championship. Can you take us through your reactions and emotions when the final whistle blew? culmination of a lot of a long journey, you know, a lot of a lot of work and you know, it's really been kind of kind of a five year process building the program uh, to win a national championship that doesn't just happen overnight and uh, uh, and really the last two years I think was 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 where we finally reached the pinnacle in two thousand nine. Um, you know, I think certainly led into into 2010, and you know, I can remember sitting in the locker room after 2009 after we lost the national championship, and uh, I remember looking at the guys in that locker room and just seeing their pain, and you know, we had been number one all year, we hadn't lost a game, we hadn't given up a, a goal in the NCAA tournament, and here we were, empty-handed, and uh, you know, I, I really give the guys credit because, you know, they could have just celebrated that year as, as what it was, one of the great better seasons in the history of soccer and chalked it up to that and they said, you know, they made the decision that in that moment that second wasn't good enough and they went back to work and they, they worked even harder, dug even deeper and, uh, you know, they were on a mission this year and it was great. You know, I was mostly happy for that. Two out of the last three seasons, Akron's led the nation in goals against average. And, and sometimes the game sounds easy, you know, keep it simple on defense, attack creatively going forward. What are you doing differently in Akron uh, to make this beautiful soccer happen versus other college teams that are typically known for their more athletic style of play? Well, we focus probably 85 to 90% of our time on the attacking side. Um, you know, in order to play attractive, attack-oriented soccer where... You know, where your players are able to hold on to the ball, possess the ball, where they have the composure technically uh, to do that uh, in order to, to really have a thought process. You know, when we, when we play attack on the attack, you have to work on it a lot. Seven of your players got drafted this season in MLS, and five of which were in the first round. Which one of those players will have the biggest impact in MLS this season and why? You recently signed a long-term deal with Akron through 2020, and most people, when they sign, sign long-term, it's four or five years. Uh, you're a wanted man right now by a lot of collegiate teams, pro teams. What was the motivation to sign such a long-term deal for you? Was it a big payday, the idea of building a dynasty, or was your wife just telling you, I don't want to be moving all over the country as you as an MLS coach? Well, I knew I didn't want to 
go anywhere else. And uh, I see myself right now as a college coach. Uh, my my long term goals are certainly to be the best coach that I can and, and to move to the highest level I can. But I'm 35 years old. Um, I feel like I have a lot still to learn. I feel like I can still accomplish a lot, and I like working with right now the college age. Uh, you know, I feel like this is a very important. Um, step in the process right now in this country. College is, is important. There are a lot of kids that aren't good enough to go pro right out of high school. And for those kids uh, that aren't good enough, they need to go to college. And, and yet those kids still need to be developed for the next level. And I feel like I have a chance to do that. And, that, and, and that's probably the, the main philosophy behind um, behind doing what I do is, is we want to win but we want to win the right way and we want to develop players and and uh, and we also I also get get the opportunity to mentor kids beyond the soccer mm-hmm. a lot of people talk about the national championship but last year our team had a 3.51 mm-hmm. uh, team, team average we had 20 guys uh, above three zero, and so I get I get the chance to mentor these kids and uh you know, not only on the field, but off the field and, and as people. Dwayne Bolin on Facebook, whose son is an online soccer academy player of mine, uh, says, uh, congrats on national championship from a fellow Hoosier. Uh, congrats on building a premier program in record time. He said, if you had to summarize the advice uh, you would give young players, what are th- the three most important things they should focus on? You know, uh, for me it's simple, and, and I say this to every young kid I come in contact with, you, you have to spend time with the ball. I mean, there are no shortcuts. You know, this is a this is a sport where, um, you know, if you don't spend time working on your ball control, you're never going to have a chance to make it. You might make it when you're younger because you're a good athlete or maybe you're stronger than the other kids, um, but as you move up the ladder, uh, it, it's about how technical you are on the ball. And it doesn't matter if you're a defender, midfielder, attack, attacker. You know, you have to be comfortable on the ball. And in order to get comfortable on the ball, you have to spend a lot of time on it. So, you know, I just think the the ball control piece, you know, and that's not anything profound. Everybody says it. But the more hours you can spend touching a ball every day, uh, the better chance you have to make it. And uh, as we mentioned earlier, seven of your players got drafted. Will 2011 be a rebuilding year for Akron, or will we all be competing for a national championship again? We're not ready to talk. We're not ready to chalk this fall up as a rebuilding year. You know, I'm not going to be satisfied with that. 